waterlogged on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. When it comes to keeping a saltwater aquarium, there's a lot of work that goes into it. You wanna make sure that you're keeping your glass clean, that you're keeping your rock work clean, but a lot of times pests can get into your system and cause you quite a bit of headache. Well, what if I told you that there is a whole group of utilitarian fish that you can add to your saltwater aquarium to help keep that algae under control and help keep all of those pests at bay, if not completely gone? Well, this video is going to be 10 utilitarian fish that you can keep in your saltwater tank that will allow you more time to enjoy your tank and less time cleaning it. Okay, first fish on my list is going to be the lawnmower blenny. Just like you might expect from the name, these guys are going to cruise around your tank and mow down any of that algae that is in there, helping to keep it looking clean and nice. Not only are they gonna help to clean your tank, but they'll probably provide a little bit of entertainment along the way as they're a lot of fun to watch. Okay, the second fish on my list today is going to be an Aptasia eating file fish. I don't know about you, but at one point in most aquarist journey, you've probably encountered Aptasia. And if you've had a lot of them, you know it is a pain to get rid of them. You have to go in and manually zap them one by one, and that's not even gonna guarantee that they won't come back. Well, if you have an Aptasia eating file fish cruising around your tank, they are going to take care of that for you so that you don't have to. All right, the third fish on my list along the lines of an Aptasia eating file fish is a copper band butterfly. They too will help to remove any Aptasia from your tank. Now something that you should be mindful of when it comes to the copper band butterflies is that they're not always beginner friendly fish. They tend to be a little bit finicky eaters and kind of picky with stuff. So make sure you got a little bit of experience under your belt before adding one of these to your tank. Okay, the fourth fish on my list today is going to be a watchman goby. In fact, a lot of watchman gobies or sand sifting gobies will not only form symbiotic pairs, but they're going to provide two different ecosystem services for your tank. So the first thing they're gonna be doing is scooping up mouthfuls of sand and eating bits of food that your other fish left behind that floated down when you were feeding. So one, they're helping to remove waste from your system, but also as they're doing that, they're scooping up those mouthfuls of sand, they are sifting the sand around and helping to make sure that it is got enough oxygen that is moved around and it doesn't get stagnant. Now, that's not gonna say that they're going to take care of the sand bed for your entire tank, but in the area where they have their little burrow, you can pretty much bet that that sand is nice and moved around and stirred up on a regular basis. Okay, the fifth fish on my list today is going to be a fox face or a rabbit fish. In general, rabbit fish are great at taking care of the algae in your tank. They have those small little mouths that allow them to get into the smaller places on your tank and help to remove that algae. You have a bunch of different options, some of which are even available as aquacultured fish, so that is pretty exciting. One thing I do want you to know about the fox face is that they have a venomous spine at the base of their dorsal fin, so you wanna make sure you use caution when handling them. Other than that, they are a great addition to your reef tank. Number six, the yellow chorus wrasse. These guys are absolutely beautiful fish, and one of the reasons that reef keepers love them is because of their ability to eat flatworms. Say so nobody wants flatworms, nobody intends to get flatworms in their tank, but there's a chance that it could happen, and so that is why it's good to have a yellow chorus wrasse to help you combating those pests. But the yellow chorus wrasse isn't the only one that will help you to eat flatworms. You could also use a six line wrasse. They're a little bit smaller, they don't get to be as big, and they're really colorful. They have fun personalities and might be another great option for your tank. Now that's not the only wrasse. I also have the cleaner wrasse for you. Just like their name suggests, they are going to spend most of their life cleaning in the tank. Now, whereas a lot of these other ones are going to pick things off of your rock work and your corals, the cleaner wrasse is actually more geared toward the fish in your tank. 
You may have seen that photo or the video of the big puffer fish with its mouth wide open and the little blue fish darting in and out of its mouth and around its gills. Well, that blue fish is a cleaner wrasse. They're gonna pick off any bits of um, like old dead scales, any parasites, say flukes or ick, if your fish have it on there and basically just to help keep everybody clean. Now, I will let you know that sometimes if they don't have enough to eat, and this usually happens in smaller tanks, they can get bored and they might end up picking on the fish's gills or fins. So just keep an eye out for that. Honestly, I think the risk is worth the reward of keeping one in your tank. Okay, moving on to tangs. You know I can't have a video talking about utilitarian fish without talking about tangs. And I'm not going to limit it to just one. I'm going to say tangs in general because there are so many amazing tangs out there for helping to take care of algae. Tangs by nature are herbivores, which means they're going to help get all that green stuff out of your tank. Now, depending on the size tank you have, you might want to get a different size tank, some of them that stay smaller, like the Tolmini tang, or if you move up in size, say a coal tang, they're really great at algae removal, or even a yellow tang or a blue hippo tang. Um, there's a whole bunch of different options when it comes to tangs, and almost all of them are going to help you remove algae from your tank. Now, one little tip, if you don't notice your tang picking algae on your tank, you might want to go ahead and remove your algae clip and hold off on feeding that nori or that algae for a couple days and see if that doesn't entice them to go find snacks around your tank. The 10th and final fish today on my list is going to be the Melanaris wrasse. They're another one of the fish that's going to eat flatworms in your tank, but that's not all they'll eat. They'll actually eat some of the zoanthid eating nudibranchs, so they're very, very beneficial to have in your tank. Just make sure you got enough space. They are one of the fish that like to bury in the substrate, so you want to make sure that you have enough of a sand bed for them to feel safe and secure. Okay, this is going to conclude my video on 10 utilitarian fish. I'd love to know, leave a comment below, let me know if I have mentioned your favorite fish or if there's one that I didn't talk about, maybe I can use it in a future video. Okay, this has been Hillary for Waterlogged on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.